Hello, this is Mike Liva, and welcome to PHP Programming Lesson 27. And today we're going to be looking at classes and Flash Builder. So in the last lesson we discussed classes and we built a few, but now we're going to actually take it up a notch. And I'm going to show you how to start working with Flash Builder to actually get these programs working in Flash Builder. So real quick here, we've been talking a lot about the password random method. And we started in Lesson 25, and what we did is we turned our password generator into a function. And now what we're going to do, we're going to wrap that function into a class. And uh, if you recall, all we did is add the function tags to the beginning and end. Let's go to the very end. And we actually uh, uh, upgraded a little bit by using the implode statement as opposed to the concatenation of a character. So that's what we did in Lesson 25 and Lesson 26. We're going to take that very same function now and put it into a class. So all we have to do is get our class statement and give it a name. We'll call it data test. Throw in your variables, and I'm going to actually start scoping these variables. And what scoping means, as we reviewed last time, is that it actually defines where that variable is going to live, where you have access to, and that helps with your security quite a bit. So right here, we're going to scope these variables as private, so they can only be accessed within this class. But we're going to have some public methods as well. Now, I'm introducing a new uh, method I'm not going to talk a whole lot about, and that's the constructor. And typically, So typically what happens is when you instantiate the class, the instructor method runs first. Right here we have nothing in our constructor, but as we move on we'll be talking about this method more and more, and it is very important. And then we have our function, and that is just basically the, the random password function that we developed in Lesson 25. And we go all the way to the end, and we close our class. Now we're actually going to run this class, so we want to declare it, so we basically give it a my ran pass, create a variable, to capture your uh, created or instantiated class. So we use a new in the name of the class, and so we've instantiated But of course it won't run. What we want to do now is we're actually going to do something we talked about earlier. We're going to return more than one value. I actually want to return two. I want to return a username and I want to return a password. So the way to do that is to create an array and to stuff all this stuff into an array. So, so let's go back and take a look at the generate users pass method in the now password class. So here it is right here and I actually generate two um, passwords and I stick those into an array so it actually return an array. So in that array, I'm going to let the first uh, random generation be the uh, username, and the second one be the password. So to run this, all I have to do is basically create an array, uh, do my ran pass, that's my instance name right here, and then access or run that public method inside my class by going my ran pass with that dash greater than sign and the name of the method. And once I do that, I'm going to echo out uh, what's captured in that array, my answers. The zeroth value will be the username, and the first value will be the password. Let's go ahead and run this class and see if it works. Indeed, there we have it. We actually have now the uh, username and the password. I can regenerate this, and I've been doing this in previous videos. I want to make sure you see this. There's a little green arrow right up here. If I press this green arrow, it basically just regenerates the code. So you can actually run it over and over again just by pressing that green arrow, like refreshing in your browser. And you can see your username and your password are changing each time you press that green arrow. So great. Now we've actually created a random password class. Now, typically what people would do in this portion of PHP is now start working with web pages and show you how to bring all this into a web page. And we're not going to do that. We're going to show you how to bring this into Adobe Flash. That's right. We're going to use the PHP Data Wizard to grab this class and use Flash as opposed to HTML as our web interface. So let's get to it. So the first thing you need to do is go to a www.adobe.com and download Flash Builder. So here's the uh, Adobe site and basically if you go to uh, download you can uh, link to this uh, particular link right here and download your uh, uh, version of Flash Builder if it's on a uh, Mac, download the Mac. If it's on a Windows, download the Windows version. And you'll get about a 60-day trial, which is pretty fantastic. And then uh, you can even either purchase it, or if you're a student, I believe you can also uh, get it for free. So uh, go to it, download it, just click through it as a typical install. And when you do it, open it up, and guess what you're going to see? When you open up Adobe Flash Builder, you're going to see the same interface that you've been working with so far it's going to look almost like the PHP Eclipse environment. So if you've been programming in PHP Eclipse, you're going to find it so easy to program in Flash Builder. And So many of the techniques that we've been using to program in Eclipse, we can now apply to Adobe Flash Builder 
and learn it pretty rapidly. Now here is the password generator and this is just a, a button that I'll click to generate the password and here's a username and the password. Let's go ahead and run the code and take a look what it does. So make sure you have your WAMP server turned on and when you do, if you click here, it starts generating your random passwords. Isn't that super cool? So what it's doing, it's actually not generating the passwords from within the Flash uh, SWF, but it's actually pinging back to the server, generating the passwords, and bringing them back to the Adobe SWF environment. Isn't that pretty cool? Now let me say something now. You're going, well, that doesn't, that's not very cool. What, is, I can do that in HTML in five minutes. Yes, you can. But the neat thing about here, look, what you cannot do in HTML is you can just move this wherever you want just by dragging. You see, in HTML, it's such a pain to put these where you need them to go. But in uh, Flash Builder, look at that. I now have all the power of Flash, and my Flash is now talking to my PHP. Also, you can rotate and move this in 3D. So there's a lot of cool things that can be done here. And uh, there's not many tutorials out there on how to do this. So this is very new with PHP. I mean, this is pretty much cutting edge. So go ahead and get everything ready. And we're going to show you now how to begin preparing Flash Builder to build your first Flash Builder PHP project. So thanks for listening. This is Mike Lively. Go ahead and download Flash Builder, and we'll get to it in the next video.